We begin now with Israel expanding its ground operations in Gaza. The Israeli military has begun sending heavily armored vehicles into Palestinian territory three weeks after Hamas launched its initial attack on Israeli civilians. As the tanks rolled into Gaza, the skies lit up from airstrikes. The extent of Israel's movement is still unclear, but two U.S. officials tell CBS News that this appears to be a rolling start to a ground invasion. Let's bring in CBS News foreign correspondent Rami Inocencio in southern Israel. Rami, tell us what you are seeing there near the Gaza border. Uh, Lana, hi there. Yes, the intensity of Israel's strikes is absolutely increasing over the course of today. We were here yesterday, and the intensity of the artillery, the war planes that we heard overhead, and the number of drones overhead has gone up. Now, if you look behind me right here, the Gaza Strip is less than a mile behind us, but you can't see any lights there. That's because, as you mentioned, the entire strip is still in a blackout. That's for electricity, but also for most communications. You might be able to make out a little red dot back there. That is a flare that went up several minutes ago, hanging in the sky, trying to light up potential targets for Israel's defense forces. But aside from that, there should be at least dots of light from houses, buildings here and there, a normal scene you might expect from any town uh, on the border. But it is also so much more what you hear. Uh, when we were here earlier, uh, you could hear almost every few minutes the boom of artillery. Uh, you could feel the boom through your feet and in your chest resonate here. But aside from that, it's also what we're not seeing. Uh, over the past few weeks, we saw images of tanks uh, gathering in columns around here. We're on the outskirts of the town of Sderot. Now, uh, driving in over these past few days, we haven't seen any tanks whatsoever. We now, of course, have seen those tanks inside Gaza. In addition, this town here, Sderot, is pretty much a ghost town, a peacetime population of about 30,000 people. But now uh, there's almost no one around except military and a few journalists. And you are among them, Rami. We appreciate that and the danger that you're in. We still don't know, though, how expansive this operation could get. How is the military, uh, the IDF, describing this move? Sure. Well, Israel's military, as well as Israel's government, are really putting this through the lens of a fight for Israel's sheer survival and a fight for uh, peace here uh, for all Israelis. Now, that might be ironic to, to some by saying that, well, if they're waging this uh, start to a rolling ground invasion, how can they call it that they're working for peace? But that is what they're saying. And now, today, they say they're moving on to the next phase of the war. The implication here, you just probably heard another boom from artillery going in. Uh, the next phase of the war, the implication here is that it will be an increase even further of intensity. The Army Chief of Staff confirms IDEA forces are still on the ground in Gaza. They've already killed hundreds of Hamas fighters, including commanders. Earlier, we already learned that the IDF has killed the Hamas head of the Navy, as well as the Hamas head of the Air Force. Uh, but mostly, the objectives of this war require a ground operation. That's what the Army Chief of Staff is stressing. Uh, in effect, mentally preparing Israel and mentally preparing the world, really, for the longer haul. And, Remy, we have to ask what this means for civilians and, in particular, American citizens living in Gaza. Yeah. Um, from what we understand, Lana, uh, inside Gaza, we are not there. We cannot get in. From what we are seeing from the few reports that are coming out, chaos is the word. Total chaos, absolute chaos. The life of more than two million Palestinians, citizens, most of them, have been turned upside down. It's being described as a new, tragic kind of hell on earth. Uh, the pain and the suffering that we've been seeing over the past three weeks will likely only get worse. That is, unless and right now, that might be a big if uh, aid, more aid is needed uh, that is allowed into the country uh, and that people trying to flee uh, um, uh, the Gaza Strip uh, will be able to uh, be able to be allowed out. But right now, there's no sign that that's going to happen. Uh, one note, though, is that Israel did say that as this rolling ground invasion, rolling ground operations continue, that they will uh, 
increase the amount of aid, but there are no details to that, uh, how much aid is needed, or, or whether they would be allowing uh, um, people to, to leave the Gaza Strip. But uh, uh, more than 7,700 people we know today, according to the Ministry of Health, have died. We don't know in the past 24 hours how many people have died in the Gaza Strip because of Israel's assaults. But of course, without a doubt, that number will rise. And even as you're saying that, Remy, we see those uh, explosions behind you. Remy and Asensio, thank you. Internet and phone services were cut off to the more than 2 million Palestinians remaining in the Gaza Strip yesterday as Israel at Israel's attacks intensify there. Hundreds of Israeli forces are reportedly amassed along the Gaza border amid continuing airstrikes on the territory. It's not clear how many casualties the new airstrikes cause due to that information blackout, which has also cut off aid right now to the region. CBS News foreign correspondent Deborah Pata joins us now. She is in Jerusalem. Deborah, what are you hearing out of Gaza today? Everything that we are hearing, Lana, is bad news. It is a dire situation there. We've already seen over the past three weeks since that October the 7th attack the devastating cost for civilians living there, for children, for parents, and that is only increasing our CBS producer who is in Gaza and has re been reporting from inside Gaza since the very beginning three weeks ago. Mom, he tells us that there are hundreds of people streaming towards one of the hospitals that he visited, Al Shifa, desperately looking for relatives, hoping against hope that they may find them there. People are also heading towards the hospital to seek shelter, to maybe stay there overnight because their home no longer exists. They have lost everything. You see entire neighborhoods that have been reduced to rubble and sometimes entire families have been crushed beneath the ruins of those residential buildings. And what we're also seeing is the children. We're finding more and more children suffering devastating injuries, being taken to the hospitals, but they cannot be treated because everything is running out in Gaza. There is no fuel. It's very, very much in short supply. Water is running dry and medicine, life-saving medicine is running dry. And doctors say all they can do is provide words of comfort. And we're also seeing devastating images of children who are clinging on to the hope that their parents may be alive. So many of them have been orphaned. And of course, the blackout there is causing absolute panic because normally after each bombardment or each raid, people would phone each other in Gaza to check that their relatives are okay. They can no longer do that with all communications having been cut off. Lana? Deborah, I am still haunted by, uh, by that father that you brought us and his two-month-old baby that died previously. And now with communications cut off, uh, no internet, no phone service, we don't, we don't even know the status of those types of stories. Uh, I'm wondering what all of this means then for the, the possibility of those hostages that are there and those negotiations, because we did see uh, that there were at least some reports today that Hamas was saying uh, that, that they were willing, they were open to the possibility of an exchange. Can you tell us anything about what this uh, next phase, as the IDF is calling it, means for those negotiations? I think it's a very agonizing time for the families and the loved ones of those hostages. Hamas claims that already around 50 hostages have been killed in Israeli strikes. Now, we cannot independently verify that information, but we do know that the hostages are putting increased pressure on the government to do more. Um, there are some who have even said they were not consulted about these raids and that now they're worried that their families may not come home alive. The Israel Defense Force has said they are going to destroy Hamas and also bring hostages home. And the families of many of those hostages seem to think that these are counter opposed, that they work against each other, that the more the strikes increase, the greater the chances of something happening to their loved ones. Those negotiations do continue, but obviously it's a very difficult time with that blackout. 
the United Nations has said that they can't even reach their teams on the ground. There is no aid that is getting in right now and they simply do not know what the current state is. So those negotiations may continue, but actually finding out more information and trying to assume that something is going to happen while this heavy bombardment is taking place is a very, very difficult one for those families who are just spending hours and hours of agonizing, waiting to get some kind of news. As we know, so far, only four of the 229 hostages that remain there now have actually been released. All right, Deborah, thank you.